So we, we purchased the 757 about in, in 2005, so roughly 17, 18 years ago. And it replaced a Boeing 720 that we had. And we've been doing engine testing since the mid-60s. You know, all that time, all those years of lessons learned and uh, deciding what specifically we would need in a, in a new test bed when we went to look for one after something to replace the 720. So we actually did a, a green belt project. We uh, reviewed multiple types of aircraft, large and small. We, uh, we looked at Airbus, maybe a 320, a 340, 747s, 767s, and of course the 757. The capability that this plane provides, both in size and performance, really won out in, the, in that process. It does also have a lot of Honeywell content from the factory, giving it the ability to go beyond engine testing and make it really a more viable test bed for us so that we can test multiple products. And we really succeeded with that. We modified the plane, it took us about three years to modify it just for the engine testing part. There's a pylon that's pretty obvious on the side, and the whole job here is to collect data for an engineering group, whether it be for the engineering group that's making engines, or maybe they're making an airborne weather radar, a data link system, or the satellite systems like we've talked about. So we're collecting that data, and it's our job to make sure that that's accurate, repeatable, and cost-effective data. We're here to demonstrate our some satellite technology, satellite communications technology we have. Uh, we've got some really new, really cool equipment that enables pretty high speed communication over some of the legacy uh, networks, and legacy satellite systems, like an L-band system, and also our KA band system, which is a high speed broadband capability for the cabin. And primarily this is a, you know, this is a military event, this is a defense and space kind of a product that, uh, with our modems and things that really enables a resilient capability of connectivity beyond line of sight for airborne assets, fixed wing assets, maybe helicopters, even uh, unmanned vehicles. We have systems, of course, that work on the commercial aircraft and work on military aircraft. Uh, they can connect to various different satellite systems because there are government or military type satellites as well as commercial ones. And we've adapted or adopted different uh, modems and different pieces and parts of that to work with either type of system that we were offering. So you might be flying on an airliner, a brand new A350 for instance, that might have our, our jet wave terminal on it that connects to the MRSAT KA band uh, satellites. The safety services that the cockpit would use there, meaning the system that keeps the cockpit connected over water and you know, when we're not over land is a part, is a part of our L-band system, also connecting to MRSAT's L-band satellites. So that's on a commercial aircraft and that's how the, you know, the cockpit stays connected with air traffic over water and how the, in the cabin you might be flying in the, in the back and enjoying a, uh, streaming a movie or something. All those systems are, are enabled. Uh, and then in the military one, the, the idea there, of course, is keeping a, the whole team, the whole fleet of aircraft connected back with headquarters or with each other. And the resiliency of it is being able to connect to, I mentioned, all those different types of satellites and having a system on board that, say, if one, one part of that isn't working, it'll fail down to having another part working that maybe it's a little bit lower in speed, but you do maintain the capability. So you've always got a connection because we have multiple paths of enabling that connection on the aircraft. And that's the kind of systems that we're here to demonstrate. Uh, we've been taking folks on a flight, about an hour long flight. We've, uh, for no particular reason, we've decided just to go towards Tasmania really. And we, we kind of go south and we turn around and and come back and uh, explain the system to them and let them enjoy or see how, how it works. Of course, we're able to maintain that connectivity through even some spirited maneuvers that we're doing here at the, during the air show. We first considered doing that uh, in this airplane just for the test engine. We considered having an extra tank, you know, fitted inside uh, that would supply the test engine. But as we've seen, the, the sustainable fuels have evolved to where they meet all the properties that are required by the engine manufacturers and, and we can use 
sustainable fuels in this aircraft, just like we use Jet A. Uh, last year in the summer, we started regular deliveries of sustainable fuel to our facility in Phoenix, Arizona, where we are based. So all of our aircraft in the flight test fleet are using sustainable fuel, and uh, we can certainly use that to test for our engines, for our APUs. The availability of sustainable fuel is really the only thing that's kind of stopping us from using it more, but it's coming along and it's evolving even more. So the pylon is there permanently. Its position, I mean, it sticks out, so it does provide a little bit of drag, but the whole idea of the installation was that we wouldn't in interfere with the operational capability of the aircraft, meaning being able to go as high and as fast as the, uh, and as slow, really, as the aircraft was designed you know, by Boeing back in the day. So um, we did a lot of fluid modeling. We've, we've put some aerodynamic treatments on it so that it, we, and we achieved that. You know, speeds below a normal landing speed, maybe 30% um, or so above a stall speed, getting a little bit lower than that. And we, would, and we do have to do that occasionally for the uh, engine testing. That's when we'll really see that need for the cross control. But uh, even on a normal landing or a normal takeoff, we don't, uh, we don't have much uh, effect. It's been a wonderful trip all in all, really. The Avalon Air Show has been amazing. <laughs> we, we get to sit out here in the aircraft and have one of the best seats to, uh, to watch the, the, the air shows, the demonstrations. As I said, we've been able to do some, some spirited maneuvers ourselves. It's well appreciated by the crowds and the customers. And uh, yeah, we've had a really good time so far. I've got a lot of little trinkets for my son to bring back. And uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll enjoy them. It's been a good time.